Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another installment in the iWish series, a series in which I buy things off Wish and see if they're any good, most of the time they're crap, and in today's episode we're going to be having at the Panasonic FZ1002 camera, which was released a couple of years ago, I think it was about two years ago, and this does 4K video, 1080p at 60 and 30fps, and a whole bunch of other things, it is a very professional camera, and you may notice that there's something going on with the quality, that's because I'm using the camera that I'm doing today for this part. Oh boy, I'm actually having to stand up because the camera's just... You know what? Let's just kick into the review because this is going to be a real fun one. And there you go. That goes to show that improving video quality does in fact improve your YouTube videos. That's a fun fact. Rightio, let's get into it. So this camera can be found on Wish, most notably Wish. You can probably find it elsewhere. But currently it's $36 Australian and is the 2020 upgrade professional video camcorder HD 1080p handheld digital camera 16 times digital zoom support SD card. Of course it supports an SD card because, you know, if it didn't support an SD card then it wouldn't be a camera. Or it could just have internal flash storage. Who knows? This camera has a generous 35 reviews at 3 stars and here's some of the reviews here. They seem pretty happy with it, pretty compact and stuff. It is, you know, reasonable. And I'll just showcase some of the pictures in the listing here. Like all of its high quality features that it comes with, including the 16 times digital zoom lens, face detection, 16 megapixels, 2.4 inch LCD. And then in another picture, it says that it can do 24 megapixels, 1080p HD and can be used as a webcam. The XJ05A, new life record, every wonderful moment, FPV output, viewfinder, and nice size. It doesn't have a viewfinder, and he's clearly using an actual DSLR, but okay, fair enough. Uh, the photos are just wonderful, so if you want to have a pause and just have a look at all of these images and see what the camera actually claims that it can do, feel free. But I can pretty much tell you that all of this stuff that it tells you is completely bullshit, because it also claims that it's got a wide-angle lens, 140-degree wide-angle. Yep, okay. Uh, FPV output, which is TV out. Unfortunately, I don't have the cable. You can take photos of a guy carrying his bike, but the shutter speed is so slow you won't even be able to do that. I love in the specifications as well. It clearly says 5 max megapixel CMOS. That's the image sensor. But then the image resolution is 12 megapixels, but 4,000 by 3,000. This camera does none of that. And the listing actually says it's a DSLR camera. So people are going onto Wish, searching for DSLR, and this is one of the first results that come up, is this thing here. So if you're thinking of doing YouTube and you think, hey, I need a cheap camera, I'm going to just go online and see what I can find, you'll probably end up stumbling across this. This could even be on Amazon as well, I haven't checked, but it's probably going to be everywhere considering I've seen this camera so many times before. Look, just because you're using a cheap camera doesn't mean you're going to have terrible quality. Sometimes you can get cheapo cameras and they do take good photos and stuff. Sometimes you get cheapo cameras and they take absolutely garbage photos. This is the case with this one. $36 Australian plus $18 shipping. I'm not too sure what that is in other currencies, but I can display it here if you want. Let's just put it out there and say you do not want to use this camera. You don't want to use it for pictures. You don't want to use it for videos. This thing is just, no, you do not want to. You do not. No, stay away from it, please. Spend a couple extra bucks on a secondhand camera and you might be right, but here it is here. Yes. It does have a cash converter sticker on it. I found it at cash converters. It had 29 on it. I got it for 20 bucks. Because, honestly, who else is going to buy this thing except for me? <laughs> I, could, I couldn't turn it down considering the box. So let's have a look around this. And I guarantee that this is the same product that is on Wish. I mean, the camera is exactly the same as in the photos and all that sort of stuff. So it's just that I didn't have to wait for shipping. I got it straight away. I didn't have to do anything. So here it is. The camera I paid 20 bucks for, high definition, H.264 DV camera, 16 megapixel max, CMOS sensor, 720p, infrared lens, <laughs> another H.264 HD photo TV, full HD, 720p at 30fps, EIS, 2.4 inch TFT LCD, 1280 by 720 recording, 4 AA batteries to power the thing. How many times did they say that it records in 720p? Three times, just, just on the front of the box. Oh, it gets better. So it's a HD video cam, but it's also called an SLR camera. Fair enough then. On the side, we have the specifications of said camera. 16 megapixels sensor max. And that is a clear lie because I can tell you that the sensor in this does not even come close to that. Which said it was also a 5 megapixel camera. Not even close. 2.4 inch TFT LCD, 320 by 240 uh, I could probably believe that. USB 2.0 mini port, video format AVI. 
That's correct. Video resolution 1280 by 720, 720 by 480, 640 by 480, and 320 by 240. It does only one of them. It does a video resolution close to one of them, but we'll get there. Photo resolution 12 megapixel, 5 megapixel, 3 megapixel, 1 megapixel, and VGA. White balance, explore resolution dot dot dot. They put the dot 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 there as a continuation. It's like, you'll figure it out. You'll work out what's going on with this thing. Audio recorder, microphone. Glad it records with the microphone. Audio power off function, digital zoom 16 times, that's a whole heap of crap. Multi language menu, webcam function, four AA batteries, internal memory, storage media built in 64 megabytes of flash memory. That's like 10 photos if you're lucky. Um, on the other side of the box, 16 megapixel, 2.4. Yeah, yep, okay, we've seen that. Um, got some more advertising here. High speed USB 2.0. Supports a HC card. Support up to 32 gigs. This actually doesn't take anything over 8 gigs. Uh, got a bunch of languages. Operation OS. So it's an operation operating system. Okay. Uh, Windows XP, Vista, and Mac. Great. And there's also a barcode there that says it's a YG1163. And it just says that it's got an infrared lens and all that sort of thing. And at the bottom, there's nothing. Okay, I'm delaying the absolute inevitable. You've already seen the quality of what this thing can do. So let's dig into the actual quality of the unit. And, oh boy. Opens sort of like a um, egg out of alien sort of thing. It just sort of opens in every direction. And you think a face hugger would just jump out and attach itself to the camera. I wish that'd be more exciting than what's about to happen with this one. So we have the camera, which, yep. I'll just put you over there. There is actually a bit of garbage bag in here that contains someone's address on it. There is a tracking number on it, and I look that tracking number up, and it turns out that this is in fact from Wish, because it was sent by Wish Post only a couple of months ago. Inside we also get a mini USB cable, which is completely useless. We also get a manual and a CD, I think? Do we get a CD? Oh no, it's just a bit of extra cardboard in here, that's about it, okay. All right, box is done. Nailed it. And the instruction manual, unfolded here tells you the table of contents feel free to pause the video if you want you might want to read all this to find out what this camera can do power source four times double a batteries do not include it in the accessories yelling at me the package shall contain all the accessories as below please contact your retail if anything is missing or damaged list of package contents video recorder usb cable user manual that's basically all i got so that's about it uh you've got the button guide here that's about it. LED key, lens cover, the batteries. Start to use. Feel free to start to use. Uh, and on the back, you've got basically the whole way of using the camera. Press this button to do this and all that sort of thing. Majority of this is pretty crap because half of this doesn't even work anyways. We'll get to it. Don't worry. How does one fold this back to the way it was? You know what? It doesn't matter. All right, here's the gem itself. Yep, it's a camera. Thanks for pointing that out, fellas, that it's a camera. Good on yous. Uh, 16 times digital zoom, and it's trying to look like a DSLR, but the thing is completely hollow. There's probably just like the image sensor there, a couple of wires to a couple of PCBs in there, and that's basically it. Does that, though. That's more fun than the actual camera itself, to be fairly honest. Uh, but look, this thing is entirely made of plastic, as you would expect. Here's the top of it here. You can see the grip and all that sort of stuff, but you can literally just hold it with one hand because it doesn't weigh anything. You got the power on button, the zoom functions, the little hole for our microphone. On the back, we've got our 2.4 inch TFT LCD, which actually seems like it's a little bit crooked. If you just look up the top there, you can actually just see that the LCD is crooked in there. That's okay. That's fine. Fake leather grips here. Just an all plastic build. Uh, we have a mode button, up, down, menu, okay, and playback. On the side, we've got a couple of screws, which I can't actually wait to tear this down because it'll be quite fun to see what's inside of this thing. And on the front, we've got our speaker there just for playing back videos and all that sort of thing. And just here, we've got our little door that reveals the mini USB port. A slot for an SD card up to only 8 gigabytes. It does not support anything else higher than that. And we've got a 3.5mm headphone jack. Not for headphones, but for TV out. And I don't have that cable, so I can't test that, unfortunately. Sorry. Got a little hole for a lanyard or strap 
which doesn't come with this. At the bottom, we've got a hole to mount it to a tripod, which I did at the start of this video. And then we have our battery door, which just opens like that to reveal that it has four AA batteries inside to power this thing. Because this thing uses stuff all power and it can run off four AA batteries. It's questionable how long it will last, but you know. These batteries came free with this camera too. They were already in it when I purchased it. Bargain. Do you want to see the main feature? This is the camera. Digital zoom lens. L equals 9.88 millimeters aperture 5.0 video lens. Now I'm not a camera guy. I can't really tell you the specific details of an actual camera. I can't tell you aperture sizes and all that sort of thing off the top of my head. So what you're seeing here is basically um, probably a bunch of lies just there. Uh, this is fixed as well. This does not move. Once again, according to those reviews, it takes wonderful photos and it's nice and compact. <laughs> Wait till you actually see the photos and videos this thing can take. You're probably wondering, what does the user interface look like? Just wait for it. <laughs> Welcome makes cameras. We thought Welcome was just exclusive to phones. Nope. They make cameras. Look, Welcome's not a brand. It's just a little greeting that comes up. It's just a little joke that we've come up with because it says Welcome. It's a Welcome branded device. This comes up with it. You get what I mean. Anyways, uh, I've got no card in it. I thought I did. With an SD card installed in the camera, we can go ahead and see what this thing can actually do. You'll see on the screen it says 16 megapixels. You can change this to 12 megapixels, 5 megapixels, 3 megapixels, 2 megapixels, 1 megapixel, and then back to 16. When I show you the photos and videos I took with this thing, I'll then comment on all of this. So pressing up will change the resolution, pressing right will change it to playback mode, and I've got no videos on the SD card because I've had to pull them all off. Pressing that will go back to the camera. Pressing down will change the exposure. You pretty much just cycle through it until you get to what you want. Most of the time it was set to default, which was 0.0, .0 but sometimes it jumped to two, which is a bit strange. Uh, pressing M, is the menu. So you can see resolution, photo, quality, super fine. Of course it's super fine. Exposure and date label, which date label actually comes up when it wants to. I switched it off a number of times, but every time I would take a photo, it would just come back up again. But that's it. That's literally all you can do in the camera options. That's it. You can't do anything else. So then what else can you do? Switch modes, and there you go, 1080p video. And you obviously can't see what's going on because I'm pointing this directly at my mouse mat, but the lens is fixed at a really strange distance. It's really close up, and it is at, well, you'd think that you could just zoom out and it'd fix it, but no. Zooming does not work in video. You cannot use digital zoom while recording. Bit of a strange one, but okay. Uh, 1080p or 720p or VGA. One of those is true and one is close, but spoilers, you can't record in 1080p on this thing at all. Pretty much everything with video is the same thing. You can change the exposure and go into menu, which resolution, 1080p, cyclic record. <laughs> three minute, five minute, 10 minute, which means after three minutes, it just shuts off and then starts recording again, I assume. Uh, exposure and date label, which as I said, I switch that off and then just comes back up the next time I take a video. Which if you wanted to take a video and stop the video, you have to turn the camera off, wait for it to shut down, and then switch it back on and then start a video again. So it's a bit of a pain to use this thing. And then coming over to the settings menu within video, you've got time setting, which obviously you can set the time for the timestamps that come up. Auto power off, which is set to three minutes, but you can change it to off one minute, three minute or five minute. We have screen savers which we can set to one minute. Wonder what that would do actually. Okay, well the screens just went blank, so that's obviously the screensaver. We can come down to sounds. So the first option is shutter. The startup, I've changed it to the second option. Oh, it's silent. Okay, so selecting one plays it. Two's nothing, three's nothing, and then no. I'll try three. Nope. So two and three are just silent. You've got beep, and then sound is just one, two, three, zero. That's probably the volume, I'd say. So we'll keep it at three. Language, you can change to, well, all the languages that probably set on the box. Frequency, we can change from 50 hertz to 60 hertz, but obviously I've recorded at 50 hertz, so we'll just leave it. If we can format the SD card, default setting obviously sets everything back to default, and version is version 1.10. And that's it. You can also change modes to microphone. 
there's an audio recorder built on the camera, which I guess is a fun thing if you want to walk around and just record audio instead of actually recording. Okay, it's a useless function, but sure, why not? For me personally, I don't think I can find a use for it. So there's a 16 times digital zoom just there. It barely does anything. Man, I can't really demonstrate it properly, but that's 16 times. That's normal. <laughs> yeah. Sure thing, man. Sure thing. As I said, the zooming functions don't work during video, only during photo, unless I'm doing something wrong. And the actual shutter button itself is just here, which... It's a pretty slow shutter, and it's not a two-stage one, it's just a one-stage one. You just click and that's it, done. And the LED flash, you just flick that, and there you go. That's it. So in terms of the user interface of this thing, there is not much going on. And the viewing angles are pretty terrible on the LCD as well. Only a cheapy thing, what do you expect? But I think what you all want to see is the photos and videos taken with this device. And let me warn you all that what you are about to see is pretty terrible. You can't expect much off a camera like this, can you? Well, let's not waste any time. Here's all the photos and videos taken with the Welcome Cheapo camera. All right, testing 1080p on the camera. We go down to the front. And as you can see, there seems to be no autofocus going on whatsoever. Nothing will toggle it. So it is just fixed. It seems to be pretty stabilized. It seems to be fairly good. When I play this back though, it'll probably be very choppy, but at the moment it seems okay. Because then panning along the brick wall, Seems alright. Going down to Stuart, who's sitting in the sun, chilling, as he does. He's all good. For a better colour, we have the lemons in the tree. And one lonely one just on the ground there, if you can see it. There. God, the viewing angles are terrible on this one too. And of course, finishing it off with the digital zoom. Okay, we're doing digital zoom. That's good. Okay, we've bumped down to 720p on the camera point of view it looks exactly the same on this crappy LCD, but we'll let the footage speak for itself I guess. And the sun has just gone in. And just sort of moving around with the camera, seems to be okay, seems to be fairly sturdy. Also I noticed that I can't just stop videos, I have to turn the camera off in order for it to stop. That's okay. Brick wall, as per normal. Hopefully that's fairly smooth. I mean, this is on 720p, so we're saving resources here. Stuart is still sitting there, smiling. Lemons, lemons, more lemons, lonely lemon. And finish it off with digital zoom on 720p. And it work. So we just stick to aircon in normal. But look at the clouds though. Holy moly, they look good. We're at the lowest resolution this can take. And that's VGA, so 640 by 480 Which, still using this LCD, looks absolutely the same. I can see no difference. As I said, we'll let the footage speak for itself. But no, digital zoom does not work during video, which you'd think it would, but holding it doesn't do anything. 
No clue, no clue. It's a silly welcome device, what do you expect? Wonderful details on the brick wall. EIS is probably working now because it's only 640 by 480. It's not doing much. I wonder how many frames we're actually pulling on this thing. It looks like maybe 15 to 20, maybe. Lemons, 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 more lemons, lonely lemon. And then finally finishing it off with far away aircon, but we can't zoom into it. So that's all it is. All right, time for the explanation. Setting the camera to 16 megapixels will only take photos in 1280 by 960. Swapping it down to 12 megapixels is the same result. Swapping it down to 5 megapixels is the exact same result. Swapping it down to 3 megapixels is the same result. Swapping it to 2 megapixels results in the camera taking photos at 640 by 480 but then jumping down to 1 megapixel, the photos come up as invalid and they can't be viewed on the camera or a computer because they're just empty, they're blank files. So 16, 12, 5, 3 all do the same resolution of 1280 by 960, 2 does 640 by 480 and 1 takes a dud image, just doesn't do anything. And during the photos and videos you've seen the date code appear a couple of times, that's because every time you switch resolutions it either switches it off or switches it back on depends what happens. Changing the quality from super fine, fine and normal really doesn't do anything. Super fine and normal are exactly the same thing and fine's exactly the same thing as well. There's no difference there. Changing the exposure made things a tiny bit brighter but otherwise nothing spectacular. Also the photo you can do um, self two seconds, self 10 seconds and burst but the shutter's very slow that you just can't even do that. As mentioned with the digital zoom before as well, it's absolutely useless. It's weird that they say it's 16 times digital zoom. It does it, but that's not 16 times. But anyways, sure, why not? While it's very hard to demonstrate at the moment, if I start recording, it's fairly smooth. It looked like EIS was on and everything like that. It all looks really good at this point in time, you know? Putting something in front of it. There's no autofocus either. It's just fixed. So, you know, everything looks great. But then when you play back the videos, as you've seen before, it's just absolutely terrible. And a weird issue that I had when taking videos was that every time I'd finish with a video and press the shutter button, it wouldn't stop, it'd just keep recording. And I'd have to just turn the camera off and wait for it to boot up again and stuff. But no, it just worked straight off the bat there. Okay. So 1080p is actually 1280 by 960. 720p is still 1280 by 960 and VGA is 640x480. So it does not do 1080p. It's not interpolated to 1080p or anything like that. And the image sensor appears to just be a 1.2 megapixel one that says it can do 16 megapixel shots and eight megapixel ones and all that sort of stuff. But no, it can do none of that. Absolutely none of that. Now I was gonna test the webcam function on this, but unfortunately I can't do that because there's no drivers for this on Windows 10. It connects and just says, can't find anything. I tried to look for a driver and nada and this didn't come with a driver cd or you know instructions on where to get one from so so that's pretty much useless the flash there you go that's what it is it's not that bright look it's reasonable as you've seen in the test photos i took a picture of the delorean um in a pretty dark area and it was it's half reasonable but we're only dealing with 1280 by 960 resolution and it's not the greatest sensor in the world and some sort of a trigger that switches it off okay there you go Having a look like this and trying to do zoom or whatever, the lens doesn't move, it is just all fixed. So no autofocus. Doesn't accept anything past a 8 gig SD card. The camera is just a big mold of plastic. The buttons are pretty much hollow and clicky. The whole thing is hollow and nothing inside of it. Uses four AA batteries to power it. The image sensor is 1.2 megapixels. 1280x960 photo and 640x480 photos, as well as 1280x960 video and 640x480 video. Digital zoom does not work in videos. The shutter speed is super slow, and it's off wish. I don't think I need to say much more than that, to be fairly honest. Honestly, there's not a lot we can really do with this. So it looks fine there, but playing it back, completely different. Oh, look. You can make it go backwards. Wow, that's interesting. There's the video playback there. Yeah, no, it looks good, but once you play it back on a computer, it looks absolutely terrible. Well, I can't think of anything else to talk about on this thing. It's got a little power LED just there where the on button is. Let's switch it off. Goodbye. Well, I've told you all of the negatives with this. There's absolutely no positives that I can think of with this. 
I mean, apart from the price being super cheap, which, yes, that's a good thing. Cheap stuff is good, but this is not a cheap item that is good at all. This is far from it. So what's one thing that we can do to investigate this further? Let's take it apart and see what's inside of it. Because honestly, like, I've got an iPod mini here. The iPod mini weighs more than this camera. That's not a joke. <laughs> and that's with the batteries installed. If we take the batteries out of the device... Oh, yep. That's nothing. I think this Samsung battery may be heavier than the actual camera itself. <laughs> Alright, well, um, let's... Yeah, let's go ahead and tear this down then. Because I can't think of anything else to really talk about. You've seen all the photos and videos. I can't use it as a webcam because there's no drivers... It's just a cheapy thing off Wish that I didn't get off Wish. I, in fact, got it from Cash Converters, and while that saved me all the shipping and efforts and all that sort of thing. Luckily, this video has all the timestamps and stuff, so you can skip to wherever you want. If you just want to see the conclusion, if you were thinking of buying this camera, well, you've already seen it. So now it's the teardown part, so if you want to skip through this, that's absolutely fine. But we always do teardowns because what's inside of cheap electronics, you say? I have no idea. Well, I've got a couple of screws holding the thing together, so I'll just go ahead and just start removing random ones and hope that it just falls apart. I don't mind breaking this either. It's fine. I've had a look at it. I've taken photos and videos. I don't need to do anything else with this. I think you get the point of what's going on here. This video is going to go for too long anyways, but that's all right. Oh, all right. There's the first piece taken off. Right there. Revealing a model number just there. 2017. Wow. Okay. We've also got a code for the LCD just there, which is 2018. Oh, there we go. I've just popped the LCD back into place. Now the whole thing just sort of lifts out, does it? Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so I've taken the flex cable off for the image sensor. So at the top, we've got our subboard for zoom, power, and all that sort of thing. Look at all the hot glue just there. Just you know, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Got a wire up there that goes to the LED flash, and there's a little trigger just up there to activate it. Um, we've got a little speaker just mounted just in there, which pretty much done stuff all when I was testing it. But the actual main board itself is right here. For the sake of investigation, I'm just going to take this one off, because underneath is just this ribbon cable that just goes straight under there. Um, there is a small chip just located on there but I can't really see what it is it's probably the 64 megs of flash storage that it said it's got on it I'll take this one off actually just to see what's under this oh okay that's just the underside of it okay that's fair so looking into the hollow depth of this camera we've got the image sensor right down there there's two screws holding it in so I'm going to take them out and we're going to have a look at this wonderful 16 megapixel thing oh it just did it just fall apart? Oh, okay, so the whole thing can just... Oh, I've just found two hidden screws. Hang on. There we go. That's a bit better. It's all in pieces now. Just a little metal contact there. That tells the flash to go on. And when you flick it open, it tells it when to go off. See? That's literally all it is. Cheapo mechanism. You know, what can you do? There's a little speaker just there. It's literally just a little tiny one, and they didn't even take the little piece of paper off it to stick it to the actual frame. Excellent quality right there, for sure, 100%. All right, that's it. We are left with <laughs> just that. So now I'll grab the screws out. Oop, and there it is. Wow, that's it. That is it, my friends. There is a code just there, and I shall Google this to see if anything comes up or not. Oh, okay. I can take this off. All right, does anyone remember back in like 2004, 2005, actually probably later than that, on webcams, you used to actually be able to twist the lens to focus in or out. That's maybe what this lens was used for. Maybe this is just directly out of a webcam and they've just shoved it in a DSLR looking body and went, hey, it's good enough, man. That's, that's exactly what we want. <laughs> Are you for real? There's your image sensor right there. <laughs> oh, wow. Holy moly. <laughs> yep, that is definitely a lot smaller than I expected. That's what she said. Uh, rightio, well, um, yeah, that's that. You'll probably find that an image sensor 
on an S2, for example, is probably a lot bigger than what's on this thing. And the S2 is about five bucks or 10 bucks on eBay, and that'll take much better photos than this thing will. So lesson here is don't buy a cheapo camera and hope it'll do 1080p and excellent quality and stuff for the price, because it won't. And that's it there. <laughs> wow, I honestly didn't think it'd be this cheap, but there you go, that's it. All right, well, let me put it back together and we'll uh, call this a video. All this empty space just for this tiny little thing. What an absolute marvel of a camera. All right, the moment of truth. I've put a couple of screws back in it, so it should be fine. Uh, my track record for destroying things is not too bad, so let's see if this still does power on. Yay! But I think I might have killed it, though. Actually, did I kill it? It's just stuck on welcome. The image sensor's probably not in all the way. I'll try and fix that. No, there's a chance I could have stuffed it. Um, what if I do this? Nope. Is the flex cable not on correctly? Oh. My bad. Hey, there we go. So what I want to test to see is if I can focus on my camera. And there we go. That's it. So this is exactly like old webcams. You just twist that and it becomes out of focus completely. And then you twist it back and it's completely in focus. So now, for example, let's see if I can focus on this Samsung battery. I think about right there. Whereas instead, if I lock it back into its original place, that's it there. So that is how this camera functions, just like that. Also, for anyone interested, this is what happens when you take a lens off a sensor. There you go. And then you go ahead and... Oh. Maybe I just killed it. <laughs> oh, it's because I didn't press any of the buttons, that's why. Well, there you go. I hope that um, satisfied everyone who wanted to see a teardown and how this thing worked. Okay, now for real, I can put it back together. All right, final test with it all back together. Beautiful. It all works. Including that. Yep. Oh, my flash. The flash isn't on. That's fine, it works. All right, well that's it for the welcome SLR camera thing from Wish. Please don't buy this because it's a hunk of junk. If you wanna have 2004 webcam quality photos and videos, then this is the absolute best thing to go for. Otherwise, if you actually want to take a picture of something important, you might wanna actually just use your phone instead because this just <laughs> garbage. I, I don't know who would buy this, honestly. Their smartphone would be much better than anything that this thing could do. And it's sad that Wish still actually sells this and people are buying it and thinking that it's like an actual DSLR and you could do amazing photos with it and stuff. You can't. You cannot do anything with this except for take really terrible photos and videos like a webcam in 2004, as I said. With all that being said, I do have two other cameras that I have. One's a... Uh, I don't think it's a welcome one. And one's an Amcov one. And I think both are available on Wish as well. So if you want me to review them, please let me know down in the comments below. And I'm more than happy to do a couple more camera reviews. Even though I don't know terribly much about like apertures and all that sort of thing. I'm sure that what I've said in this review should make sense to 90% of the people out there anyways. So let me know if you want to see that sort of stuff and I can organize that. But otherwise that is going to do it for the welcome camera. That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> As I said, if you'd like to see more of this stuff, please let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, that is it from me. Stay safe, take care, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next video, which uh, will be probably phones, most likely. All right, what can we salvage out of this thing that's worth actual money? Batteries and the SD card. Everything else can go in a fire. Oh, I thought the batteries were energizer ones. No, they're active energy ones. Close enough.
If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.